I'm Chris, you're watching Fragmental, thanks for joining me. In this video I'm talking about my top three fragrances from my top three designer brands. Stay tuned. The idea for this video actually came from one of my subscribers. They left a comment saying they would love it if I did a video on my top three fragrances from my top four houses. I thought I would make it three houses. I just liked the idea of doing top three, top three. So these are all gonna be designer fragrances in this video today. I will make a niche version of this video if it does all right, if it seems popular, if you guys out there enjoy this video, I will do a niche version. So I'm gonna make this a tag video as well, just because I think it's a good idea for a video. I can't take credit, but I think it should do okay. I think people will be quite interested. So hopefully if I tag people at the end of this video, they will also get lots of people watching their version of this tag. So picking three designer houses wasn't quite as easy as I thought because some of my favorite fragrances might just be a standout from a certain house and I couldn't necessarily pick three really great fragrances that I have in my collection from that house. The houses that I've chosen to me are producing consistent high quality fragrances. The scents from these designer houses that I own I love them all. To me, they're 10 out of 10 fragrances. So that's how I've made the decisions that I have for this video. The first house I'm going to talk about are known for high quality, classy fragrances, French sophistication. I'm talking about Chanel. And the first fragrance from Chanel that I would like to mention in this video is one that is super wearable. It's very versatile. I could wear this all year round but it is particularly enjoyable in the summer due to a lovely prominent lemon note in here. The first fragrance I'm mentioning is Allure Homme Edition Blanche. You're gonna get lemon, pepper, tonka and woods with this one. The zesty, creamy lemon just works beautifully in the heat. Pretty much gonna get nailed on compliments with this. The creaminess, gives it a pretty decent performance compared to other more fleeting freshies. So the velvety vanilla and that juicy lemon all wrapped up with that Allure DNA just makes such a mass appealing fragrance and an enjoyable fragrance to wear. Many people compare this to smelling like a lemon meringue pie and I get that. Add to all that a touch of the Chanel class and quality and you've got a banger on your hands. Am I right or a meringue? This next one I've just spoken about in my previous video, which was all about blue fragrances. This is an iconic clean men's fragrance, pretty much invented the blue category of marine aquatic scents. It's Bleu de Chanel EDP. This is a fresh, clean and sophisticated blend of citruses and woods, but what makes this fragrance so magical is the note of incense. I just feel like it adds this really great, mysterious quality, which I adore. I have many happy memories associated with this fragrance. I bought it on a trip I went on a couple of years ago, so I just associate all the good things that happened on that trip with this scent, and I forever will do. If you want something that's simple, but classy and sophisticated, definitely give Bleu de Chanel a try. This is the EDP, but the Parfum and the Eau de Toilette are also fantastic fragrances. I just felt this one was the best balance of projection and longevity. Okay, my number one from Chanel is the fragrance that I think is the most versatile one that I own from them. And this just combines freshness with depth in a really addictive way, actually. I just, I love wearing this. It is Allure on Sport O Extreme. Citrus and mint give this one a diffusive and fresh characteristic. And then there's also depth and warmth coming from sandalwood and tonka bean. It's not a complex fragrance. It smells fairly simplistic, 
It's almost like when composing this pose took the shortest, most efficient route to creating a fragrance that would do everything the modern man wants it to do. It's mass appealing, it's incredibly enjoyable to wear, it's addictive, it's got decent performance. It ticks all the boxes, but more than that, it initiates an emotional response of pleasure and enjoyment, not only just for the wearer, but also for those around you smelling it. So the next house I've chosen, it was a tough call between this one and the one I've picked as my number one. To be honest, they're kind of interchangeable. I enjoy both equally depending on what day and what mood I'm in. So today I have picked this house as my number two designer house. And in my opinion, this brand really pushes the boundaries of artistic creations, balancing uh, artistry with mass appeal, which I think is fantastic. Quality is always on point, as is enjoyment factor. The house I'm talking about next is Dior. When choosing three Dior fragrances to talk about in this video, I've got to say, I struggled to decide which one was three, two, and one, so these are all 10 out of 10 fragrances in no particular order. I'm starting with a fragrance that is centered around a beautiful powdery iris. This one for me is excellent in autumn and winter. It is Dior en Parfum. Dior list three main notes in this one, which are iris, leather, and sandalwood. The iris is that makeup y type of powdery iris, which you may have heard people mention so often with reference to the Dior Online. I I think it's a great, uh, a great accord. I really enjoy it. The leather is kind of a smooth leather. It's not a really sharp leather. I just think it really um, gives the fragrance great backbone, holds everything together and really helps give this one fantastic performance. This is one of those fragrances that I personally find bold and confidence inspiring. It makes a statement. Wear this looking sharp in a suit. And even if you're not the boss, you're gonna feel like the boss. The next one from Dior is a beautiful citrus aromatic fragrance, but with a little bit of a modern twist. It is Eau Sauvage Parfum. If you're not a fan of the Iris Accord in some of Dior's other fragrances, then this one might be a little bit more up your street because it gives you more of a traditional classic cologne type of scent. But the addition of myrrh in here just modernizes things. It makes it a little thicker, a little bit more resinous than the original 1960s Eau de Toilette version of this, which is a little bit more like a classic cologne type of smell. Performance is fantastic on this. I get great projection. It lasts ages on me. This is probably more for the older gentleman, I would say, to wear. There's nothing really juvenile or too playful about this fragrance. This one really just does mean business. We're going back to that Iris Accord for the next one. This is not as heavy as Dior en Parfum. It's more versatile. This is just a superb classic fragrance for the modern man. Dior Arm Intense. This is centered around that powdery iris again, so you do have to have the confidence to wear a fragrance that has quite a prominent floral note, but there's also woods in here and there's a beautiful chocolatey cacao vibe as well. Personally, I feel like if you have the confidence to wear a slightly floral fragrance that can serve to enhance masculinity. That's what my wife tells me every time I wear this. Not really, but I'm pretty sure that's what she's thinking. I'm also pretty sure she's thinking this is a very sexy fragrance and I do get some good positive attention from this. It's just superb quality. It's got that addictive smell. I just can't oh, get enough of Dior Homme Intense. The last house I'm gonna talk about is one that I am just consistently in awe of, and it is the house that I own the most from. It's Tom Ford, and all the fragrances in this video are from the Private Blend. I do love the signature line. I own Ombre Leather, Beau De Jour, Grey Vetiver. I think they're fantastic fragrances, but for me, the Private Blend just seems to have that 
extra quality and wow factor. I do class the Private Blend collection as designer fragrances. I see that some people class them as niche, going off the price, but personally I don't go off the price because you can get some designer fragrances that are more expensive than niche fragrances. So I go off whether the house has a designer background and Tom Ford obviously does. So these upper tier collections from designer houses I tend to categorise as luxury designer. The first Tom Ford Private Blend fragrance I'm talking about is one that I'd read a lot about before I smelled this. I read that it was a challenging fragrance, that it was quite bold and divisive. When I smelled this, it was an instant love for me. It's Tobacco Oud. I would describe this fragrance as being complex but smooth. Obviously you've got a lovely tobacco accord, a really smooth whiskey and then there's a, a really nice animalic punch which is something that I love about this fragrance. It makes it really assertive and it seems for me to straddle that line between artistry and mass appeal. I think this is another statement making fragrance without being too challenging. I've not worn this fragrance now in a few months because I do prefer to wear it more in the cooler temperatures of autumn and winter. We're going to be getting back to autumn pretty soon and I cannot wait to get this one out again. The next one is the second private blend that I remember smelling and I was even hooked on the name of this. It is evocative, it transports you to another place and then when I smelled this it blew me away. Tuscan leather. This whisks me away to Italy and the fact that leather is in the name implies that it would be an assertive scent and it absolutely is. In this there is raspberry, jasmine, leather, it's just such an intoxicating blend. I remember just absolutely covering myself in this when I was going for a night out and uh, I was stood at the bar, the first bar I went into so I was still massively projecting and a couple came into the bar and they were stood really close to me and the, the girl said, I think someone's just ordered a shot. It smells really, really good. Can we ask the barman what the shot is that's, that he's just made for somebody? And I was just standing there thinking, it's not the shot. You're just thinking I smell good and I kind of wanted to say you know what it's my cologne but I would have been a bit of a douchebag if I had have turned around and said that because maybe it wasn't me at all maybe someone had just ordered a really nice shot but I'd like to think it was me that she was smelling anyway um, some women can find this to be quite a challenging fragrance it can be a little bit divisive not all but some unfortunately including my wife so I find myself organizing social occasions away from my wife just so that I can wear this fragrance needs must incredible scent I'm finishing with my favorite fragrance from Tom Ford this was the first private blend scent that I smelled and when I smelled this in duty free at an airport I couldn't believe that a fragrance could actually smell this good. It just sent a shiver down my spine. This is the one that got me hooked. It got me into collecting. It's Oudwood. I was in the duty free at Faro Airport in Portugal. Put a little squirt of this on my hand and all throughout the plane journey, on the way home, I couldn't stop smelling myself. Absolutely loved it. Instantly bought a 100ml bottle as soon as I got home. In this, you're going to get the Eau de Cord, which is clean and not very strong. So don't worry if you're a bit scared of Eau being too potent, too strong. You don't get that in this fragrance. You get the spices, you get the cardamom, you get the vanilla. It was just a game changer. Nothing on the market smelled like this when Eau de Wood came out. This in my experience is loved by women. It's a sexy compliment getting fragrance which is what my wife is thinking every time I wear this. I'm pretty sure of that. Every time I smell Oud Wood it puts a smile on my face and I wonder what on earth I would be doing with my life if I'd have never smelt this scent. Could have been very different. Okay, this was fun. I enjoyed picking my top three fragrances from my top three designer houses. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what your top three from your top three are as well. 
as I'm making this a tag video, maybe no one will do this, but just for fun, I'm gonna make this a tag video. I'm gonna tag two people across the pond that I know love smashing out a good list of video. I am first of all gonna tag Timmy from Imagine Sense, and I'm also gonna tag Ashton from Gents Sense. So lads, let's see what your top three from your top three are. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching. It is always appreciated. Remember, keep tuning into FM, keep smelling good, and I'll see you in the next video.